we knew the importance of what God did for us. We didn't sweat to get it. So yes and no on that side. Um, of course, yeah. God knows the intention behind whatever we ask for. So yes, for example, Yame, when I mean, when we started talking about this, she has actually called me to talk about it. So I saw that, oh, really, she's really, really interested. And the way she was talking about it, I just saw she, she has a very good intention for it. And God will look at that and give it to her when we don't know, but it will come. Sometimes it will come gradual. But there are people that, yes, they have to sweat to understand the importance of what they are asking for. There are people that yes, if you for example you give them money, they have not so they, they have not worked for it, so they are like ah, let me just use it anyhow. And there are people also who receive, they have not sweat for it, they have not worked for it, but they they know how to put it into good use. So I I would say that yes, I agree. we receive gifts not yes, yeah, so that it's not always that you sweat for something. But like we have I learned, agree. I know that um, God knows our intention. And as human okay. beings, also we change. <laughs> so I believe that when we are asking things from God, God looks into the future to see if you come back or you still say it is God who gave you, instead of you to say, yes, I pray for it, and then God, yes, you pray for God, but the glory will not, will not be yours, it will be God. So in that case, also God will give. So yes and no. There are people that, I mean, they just come. I think we had uh, other testimonies where the the prophet was just praying and there are some things he just got it, like joy. Things came and there are things you have to pray for, earnestly. So, yes, there are times that we pray for things. You, In fact, you are expecting, but it's not coming. And there are things that, in fact, your mind is all gone on it. You have prayed about it once and you are gone. And then boom, it is there. So both sweating and not sweating <laughs> will be part of it. Yeah. That's what I think. But overall, it is something we should have. I sincerely desire for it. It is something we must have <laughs> uh, to make our lives easy. Mm. How many of us haven't been deceived That's even as great. Christians? How many of us haven't been deceived as Christians? Mm. Let us pray. Made decisions that you, we wouldn't have made. We wouldn't even go near the sad decisions if we had this a gift. And the good thing is that it's a gift. It's a gift and we need to cherish it. So I'm I'm happy we took up this um um topic and I'm happy you have explained it to us, Mama. <laughs> mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, Mama thank Mary. You. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Yes. Yeah, um, <laughs> um um Annie, thank you for adding yes. it because yeah. Thank you for adding it. It doesn't mean that I I didn't I do um, that other part is not part of it. That is very correct. And and thank uh, you. I for was just bringing to our attention. I know. I know that. Yes. You know. yes. Thank you. <laughs> I know. I like. I like the fact because, that. No, you know, the thing is, is that, do uh, like for us, yeah, for us, like we have been so told that here, what so we understand. Say... Okay. Please go ahead. Yeah. Please go ahead. Yeah, what I'm saying is that we have been coming and we have been here, we have been listening. So amongst us, I think we know, but people are coming. There are people who come on the net that we don't even know that they are there, that when you take it, they will just take it as you have said it, without knowing what yeah. you know. Aside yeah, from her, Honey, that, is that is why we do right. discussion, so that what yeah. somebody has left, and didn't talk mm. about another person. That's why we listen. So when you are talking, yeah. I'm listening to where you didn't touch so that I can just add it to it. I'm not coming yeah. to um, um, say that my own is the, is the best one, or what, but I'm adding to what you did not make mention of. Because when you are yeah. talking, you may, you may mention, you can remember some of the things. Not that you don't know, but you you forget some of the things, and some of them you you made up you make up your mind you are going to mention it, and something pop in and you forget. So as mm -hmm. you are listening and I am listening, we we mm -hmm. pull those things and then we we add them to it so that the whole yeah. thing is is full. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you very much. Yes, yes. Thank you. Sir. Yes. I actually have a question, though. Um, you know, we're talking about um, up, uh, what we talked about on Sunday when we were asked to pray. Um, 
I'm a little, I'm still thinking about the the gift of foundation. And I have a question concerning that. Uh, you know, we've learned that you have to know the spirit of a person. What drives a person? What moves a person? And so I've been trying to understand what the difference is between that one and foundation. Asking for the spirit of foundation. I, I've been trying to uh understand how what the difference is unless somebody answered the question um on my part i would say that and i and again i'm saying unless somebody answers the question Mm -hmm. uh, on my part, um, Bishop did not go in detail to me. He didn't go in detail, making mention of um, uh, the spirit of discernment, um, um, positive suspicion, foundation, and decision. He did not go much in detail. He told us that mm -hmm. it's something he's going to, he's going to, uh, build on it, and then before we enter into the success, that is what I remember uh, okay. when he taught us. Yeah. So unless somebody had the answer, uh, that is what I would say. Mm. Because okay. we haven't we haven't touched it in detail. It, the individuals, uh, I haven't heard him uh, touch in details, except somebody knows uh, something about it then we are all here to learn, yeah. Yeah, like we yeah. said, we haven't learned about foundation, but I, I'm thinking in my own mind that part of the gift of foundation would be patience and making, as, as you build your foundation, you know, instead of trying to rush to the top, making sure that you go, you take your time and, and look at things properly before you try to go to the next move. Mm. That's, that's what I'm thinking. But we'll, we'll see. Foundation has to do with... No, I, I, I wanted to add something. Sorry. Foundation has to do with steadiness. You are steady. Mm -hmm. You are yeah. steady. You are stable. You don't go back and forth. Mm -hmm. yes. So foundation means that um, you are today and your tomorrow is very, very secured. Mm. It's very, very secured in everything, including money and material resources. It is secured. That's what foundation means. It means it is so deeply established. In fact, the word there too is the gift of establishment. So Mary, take note, and Vivian, and uh, and and uh, and Vicky. So when you say the gift of foundation, you're talking about the gift of establishment. You are established. You cannot, there is no economy that can you, you, you around. There is no economy that can move you up and down. There is no, there is no body with any kind of yeah. art of manipulation that can remove you from your foundation. There is no political group that come to power that can disturb what, who you are. In, in any climate, in any topography, topography means any geography, you find yourself any location. You thrive. You do well. Why? Because you have been founded on the rock. We are not just talking of being the rock. We are talking about you yourself, what you've done. What you've done has put you together in, in, in a position. It means some gift of foundation or gift of establishment means that you, you, you have you and those who have helped you and God himself and Jesus himself have put you in such a way that nothing can knock you out of existence. Nothing can knock you out of money. 
you 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 are here to stay. You are here to not just you are here to thrive or to survive or to hold on or I'm struggling. No 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 no. You you have it in luxury. You are, you are so well put together that um, is is good. That's what we mean. No matter what happens, I'm No, there is no nothing can shut you up. No way. Nothing can mess you up. Even when you have traumas of divorce or people reject you or think they didn't go well, it doesn't. It doesn't even. It doesn't even pinch you. It doesn't. It doesn't even. It doesn't even pinch you. You are just like ha ha. <laughs> you just. You just keep moving. In fact, in fact, anything that happened to you only only results in your success. That's just it. Whether good, bad, or ugly, any, anything that happened to you results in your success. You understand? Okay. If anybody, yeah. if anybody live your life, if anybody uh, live your life, that is, if they left, they didn't want to stay. It will only end up in the best coming to you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. 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 That's the gift of establishment or the gift of uh, foundation. Now, let us pray. Eternal Father, we bless you and we thank you this day. This is so important. Today is so personal to us because we are coming to be fed with the life spirit and the business of heaven so that we can operate life, spirit, and business on the earth. We ask that you will personally work with us this week. You have mm -hmm. told me that this is the week that many of us will come in contact with excessive financial abundance. That this Amen. is the week Amen. Amen. With connections, connections that forgot about us so many years ago, but the harvest is now. We thank you for this. Amen. Everybody, thank God for. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you for your blessings and Thank you. Thank you for all the goodies that we are going to do. And no, we will take care of you. Thank you for everything. Thank you for everything. Thank you for the abundance of everything. Thank you. 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 I will start with Samantha this morning. Samantha, where are you? Right here, Bishop. Okay. Uh, I want you to begin now to look at, like, University of California in San Diego. Um, begin to look at some of the major uh, top, is it 15 or 10? I think up there about 10 major University of California in Davis, in Berkeley, in San Diego, especially look at San Diego. Begin to look okay. at their post begin to look at their post doctorate studies and begin to get everything you need to get out of there. So begin to begin to do that right away. Yes, right? I will. Thank you very much. Okay. Yay, thank you. You. okay. Um Let's go. There are some of you, the area of interest in life that you have been will come screeching to an end. Please listen carefully. Remember that I don't preach. I don't come to give a sermon. I come to create I also come to remove things out of existence and to bring things into existence. That's my job. Amen. My job, like my God, is to create things. Mm -hmm. I will repeat that word. Many of you, many, many, many of you, 
what you held on to as your life career, what has been giving you money, what you have been doing that was making you a little nickel here, a little dime here, a little dollar here, a little uh, pound selling here, a little Canadian dollar here, a little um, um, uh, a little euro here, a little krona there, will come to a screeching end. Amen. Do not afraid. There are things that are going to come to an end. Hallelujah. The reason is this. It is many of you who know that you have been living a life of disgrace and a life of shame since you were born. You do not know that, that you've been living a life of shame and disgrace. Why? Because you have not been in the pattern. You have not reached the pattern, neither have you entered into the pattern and the profession of God himself. And what is that pattern and profession? It is the life of abundance, excessive yes. abundance of gold, silver, bronze, diamond, money in abundance. We are not talking of money that you bought one house. We are talking of you have a lot of real estate. We are talking that you have companies for those who that is their thing. And for those whom it is not their thing, they send that money to me for me to invest for them. The Queen of England that just died a few months ago is not the husband that is her investor. Is not a member of the royal family. She has her own because there are many of you, when it comes to money, material resources, you let marriage to overwhelm and take over your life, your dream, and your achievement. You allow families and relationships to take over it. And that is not fair. Whereas the top rich people and wealthy families on the earth always find the best out there. And that person come and swear loyalty to him or her or to that wealthy or rich family. And then they trust that person with money. And that person now is the one in charge of their money and goes anywhere in the world to invest for them. Queen Elizabeth, remember when some of the offshore tax havens were discovered in a lot of places, you know, in the Caribbean, etc., mm -hmm. in Europe. You saw that her name was in the list of yes. where that woman, that woman money was put. The house, the, 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 that woman money was in anywhere where she can have things for free, where she can, she can, she can make money without no taxes. You have to, you have to become brilliant on the earth. You have to become brilliant on the earth. A lot of people, when they want to buy their jet, they don't go to buy their jet and fly them back to the United States or fly them or to their states if they are if they are in America or fly them to Barbados and Lucia to Ghana or Nigeria or fly them to South Africa or Australia, all those places. No, they go to buy them and go and register a lot of those things where it can be done tax with with little or nothing to pay in taxes. That's why a lot of people go to Scotland to buy their jets. You have to find a way to take advantage. It's not using or abusing a human being. That's not what we are talking about. Because a lot of people always think about profit and, um, and uh, making money always through uh, a sexual relationship on faithfulness sexually, that's not, it's, that is how the, the weak, the cheap, the broke, that's how bombs think. That's how bombs think. It's like, I am to be paid money. Money is to be paid to me. 
And I'm able to say to the person that want to pay me that money, I'm able to say, can you pay me, um, can you pay me 25% of it? Can you pay me 25% of it in cash? And let me put it in my bank account and think about what to do with it for good. And 75% pay me in stock or pay me, pay me in, in other forms of payment. Why? Because the 75% will make me so much money that I will leave for many generations to come. It will make me far more money. That's the point. It's not always until you, I mean, I know that when you ask God for something, he will give you a person. That is very, very important. Don't limit yourself as to what or who God will bring your way to solve a problem for you, and then you let them go. Or if they are trustworthy, then you let them stay and keep functioning for you. You, you pay them well. You pay them very well. The same, the same people coming to mow my, my lawn. I asked Vicky last week to find me people to, to do my lawn and they will bring me some black people. They will not do a good job. Bring me some. They will not do a good job. So I said to Vicky, find me a redneck. Find me a redneck. <laughs> and Victoria went and found me a guy that loved to drink and smoke and have a good time. You know, have a little business. And that guy came with his wife. And they did not just mow the lawn. They did the yard work. Clean the flower. You know, put fertilizer where it should be. Things that will kill the bug. I mean, if you see the house, so pretty looking. Trim the flowers. Cut down trees that have died. And that is the same thing that I would have called a company to come and do for me. They would do half of that. And they would tell me, oh, we need $1,000. Because we are talking about my backyard is huge. It's very huge. But it's not the same thing I pay little or nothing for. Because when you ask God for something, God will give you a person. Amen. All, all of us. All of us are not going to become business people. Everyone is not wired that way. All of us are not going to become business people and have all this massive wealth, but we should all be wealthy and rich, one way or the other. Amen. Yeah, yeah. especially Amen. money. Amen. A, lot of, a lot of wealthy and rich people do not know how to do business, but they have others doing it for them. That's how they become very wealthy and very rich. All right. Let's go back to the discernment of spirit. It is to save you so much heartache yes. that this gift is given. It's called the gift. So it is not something that comes only with experience. Although there is a place where time-tested experience, you guys discussed it last Friday, where time-tested experience is applied, where the, same, where the gift is not in operation. That's what we are saying. Where the gift of discernment of spirit is not in operation, then other forms, other means of knowing things can apply. And I think Vicky and all of you did discuss that. We will touch on each of the each of the other things that can apply where the gift is not in operation. But it is okay. easier. It's easier if at least one person has the gift in operation. Discernment of spirit is one of the highest gifts that the Holy Spirit can bestow on a human being. Look at what God said after the flood of Noah. 
which was actually recorded in most of the books of history around the world. That's why when I was teaching Ma Mary uh, something very special, and I think Vivian too has heard me speak very highly of that, but especially Mary. You see, Genesis chapter 1 to Genesis chapter 11 is actually a history of the whole world. It's not a Jewish history. You have to be aware of that. Genesis chapter 1 to Genesis chapter 11 is not Jewish history. It's not God acting in Jewish history. It is God acting in classical time. Samantha, make sure you record this because this is, this is something very touchy to you too that you need to be aware because you run into, into this in literary studies. Yes, thank you. Okay. So Genesis chapter 1 to 11 is not a Jewish history. It's not a history of God with, with Jewish people. Jewish history began fundamentally with Abraham. And that is Genesis chapter 12. And you keep going. That's how it is. A lot of the things you read inside the Bible after Genesis 12, like looking at things with Isaiah, Daniel, Ezekiel, most of them were things that is connected to Jewish people, but mostly outside, outside the Jewish civilization. You need to be aware of this. You need to be aware of what you are dealing with in the Bible. Because pretty soon you start to think that Adam and Eve were Jewish people. That the story of Adam and Eve and the story of a lot of things you see in the Bible is based in Jerusalem or in the, in the, in the, in the Middle East only. No, it's not true. A lot of the things you are reading, even after Genesis chapter 12, like the works of people like Ezekiel, Daniel, all those people were happening in Iran, Iraq. They were happening as far as Rome, um, uh, Greece. They are happening as far as Africa, Egypt. They are happening in faraway places. And they have no connection whatsoever with Jewish people. You need to be aware of all of this. Most of these stories is happening as far away as in Egypt. It's not connected with Jewish history whatsoever. So that should tell you how God operates. God is not limited to the covenant that he has made with one group. That's just one little area. In fact, let me tell you something. Jewish history is insignificant to the big civilizations of the world. That's why when you go to the annals of history of Egyptian record, the, the Jewish history is told in passing, like in, in, in a clause or in a, a little phrase. They are, they, are, they are not mentioned. They are insignificant. Because even during the slavery days of the Jewish people in Egypt, remember that they were not the only ones in Egypt that were being enslaved. There were others. Remember Every science and technology can be traced back to Egypt. In fact, just like America is the standard of most things, Egypt was the standard for everything. Remember that. And that is why the freedom given to the Jewish people by God was also a freedom given to the rest of the people who left with the Jewish people. A lot of, a lot of other civilizations left with the Jewish people. They left Egypt. So when you read the, the when you read the history of why did the Egyptians not want the Jewish people to go, it was not just the the, the Israelites that were in Egypt. Most, the story of Moses and the Exodus represent a wider story of other civilizations that were enslaved and they left together. If you read the Bible carefully, you will see that others left with them. Others left with them and stayed with them along the way they went their ways too. So you are not just reading one history of God dealing with one group. It's a lot of groups happening at the same time. 
Discernment of spirit is a gift that <laughs> I personally I call it the gift of curiosity, the gift of exploration, the gift of adventure. Because you may think that it's just the gift to know human beings. That's not true. It's a wider gift than that. It's, it's a gift of the intellectual class. It is the gift of those who earnestly want to rule, lead the world. It's the gift of those who want to be wealthy and very rich. That is the one gift you should ask God for. If you want to stay rich and wealthy in terms of money, in terms of gold, in terms of massive um, ownership of what we term, what what we give the name wealth and riches on the earth. That's the one gift you need to operate so that you do not go about um, throwing dice on the ground or calling for Urim and Turim like in the Old Testament. No. You, you know things deep enough <laughs> to invest when not to invest, who to trust, who not to trust. Why? Because you have a gift. You're curious enough to try to do something with somebody. And the gift of God is in you. Trying to tell you something. Yes. About certain things. I will give all of you an example of a lady in one of my congregation. Her name is called Victoria. Not our Victoria. Is someone far more older than Victoria, and she has some kids. The husband is a chef, a good cook. Any little man like that, very loyal to me, very respectful, very honorable man. So her main, her main area of um, his main area of of uh, of uh, cooking is Italian, English, German, all the European kind of cooking. That's what this African guy from the south side of Nigeria, uh, that's what he specializes in. He was very, very good at cooking. You won't even believe this. You won't see that man on the road and believe that that man can cook like that. So mm -hmm. all the people, uh, also, you know those company, Julius Beggar, Scrum Beggar, as is this Scrum Beggar or whatever, those Italian company. Scrum Beggar, yeah. Scrum Beggar. Yeah. Scrum Beggar, yeah, you Scrum know. Beggar. All those construction companies from Europe, you know, and also mobile yeah. eggs who deal the oil. That man, that man was hired to cook for each of those Europe, uh, Euro European um kind of people. Companies. Companies, yes. So, um, there was a particular time that in that particular city, they finished the construction company by those company came to an end. And also, they, 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 they say time that their contract, their contract finished, so they will leave the equipment there. When the contract is renewed, they come back from Europe. So at that time, the man didn't have no money. And I didn't know that they didn't have no money. And Victoria, the wife, didn't tell me. She did not. She was a woman of great faith that was raising all these many kids of hers. So on a Wednesday, Wednesday afternoon uh, prayer meeting, I normally hold, uh, I normally hold a um, a fasting and prayer meeting uh, every Wednesday from 6 in the morning till 12 in the afternoon in the church. In the church. So sometimes those who, are, who work for government or work for private uh, corporations, they will rush in during their lunch hour to just come and hold my hand for me to touch them, pray with them, and then they rush back into the office. Many of them also stop by to bring me a gift and ask for my prayers and ask for my blessing or for me to manifest for them, and I do, I did. So this lady came. I sat outside the altar and people would come and kneel down. 
Paul will come and sit and talk to me. So she came and knelt down and she started talking to me. As she was talking to me, she split into two. Instead of me seeing one, one Victoria, I saw two. One side is telling me one thing. The other Victoria is telling me a different thing. That was my first experience of this kind of gift at work. There is a lady is in front of me, but the lady split into two. Right in front of me is quick. And so one Victoria is telling me one thing. Another Victoria is telling me another thing. The real one, I mean, both of them is the same woman, but she's split <laughs> into two. That was crazy, you know. Uh, there are certain gifts that I have seen in my life that I was not prepared for. That in reality, if I see somebody else with that kind of a gift, I would tell that person that he's a witch. That he, he there's, no, there's no way. He must be a witch. There's something wrong with that picture. <laughs> but but some, of, some of them are tweaked into me when I'm not ready for it. And that is how you know that it is real. You didn't even ask for the gift. So when she has finished talking to me and telling me what they need was, there was no money. The, the Italian company and the German company have gone because their contract have come to an end. I didn't ask them where, where the saving was, the saving, the money the husband has saved was. I did not ask because that's not, I don't go into people's privacy. <sighs> But the other Victoria that split from that split out of this one and was, was telling me something else. So when the Victoria has finished telling me everything, I said to her, "Are you sure that is all that I need to know?" She said, "Yes." She said, "Yes, my lord. That's all you need to know." I said, "Are you really sure?" She said, "Yes." I said, "Vicky, what is really worrying you is bigger than what you've told me." She said. She said, you know, there are people who, like Roslyn, my Roslyn sometimes is like that. You know, uh, Roslyn has that. There is one thing she won't tell you all about it. She will just give you a, a I, I have to actually poke into her reality to bring her out to be able, because she want to deal with things herself. She want to deal with things herself first. It is where she can deal with it. Then she called me. Oh, Bishop, I want to talk to you. That's who she is. So I value that. I give her that ability for her to explore first. Then she can talk to me, and then we can adventure together later. That's just the way she rolls. Others do not have such bravery or boldness to do that. That's different. Mary does that to me sometimes, and I didn't like that, whereby she will adventure on her own. But since, since, she's, since she's the big baby, I have to make sure that I guide her until, until she can, um, until she can uh, journey uh, into certain things by herself, things like that. But I realized that there are certain things that she is good at. She will adventure herself, uh, adventure by herself into it, and she does well. But that time, she will need my help. That's how it is. Just like this morning, we we just came into the into the into the service, and I called out Samantha and I told her. So in in the few years to come, she doesn't Samantha will not need to go and be looking for where she's going for her postgraduate studies and and to go and teach and to do her life as a professor. She's been given. She's been given definite state. The state where she's heading. She's been given Amen. to it. This is, is that's what discernment of spirit is about. So uh so this lady I said to her, your mother is sick. And there is no money to take your mother to the hospital. And she's very, very sick unto death. In your city, where you were, where you come from, where you and your husband come from, the woman broke down and said, I didn't want anybody to know this. I wanted me and my family to handle this. And she said, God, you found me out. 
he started weeping and crying and threw herself on the ground. And I said, I should hold her. And I said, this is what the Sovereign Lord God Almighty says. Right here, right now, I have healed your mother. Something like electricity have gone through your mother's body. And all that sickness vanished instantly. And in the next one hour, your mother is going to go to the market, go and buy some meat, fish, and ingredients, and come and cook soup. Your money is not needed in this. God has decided to do it for you. Your money is not needed because you don't even have. She started crying. And the whole church went on a wild, I mean, it was wild. People were <laughs> shouting. People were beating drum. People were blowing. I mean, it was crazy. You know what happened? One hour later, the mother called. And the family doctor called that out of nowhere, the mother just stood up uh, and said to the person, you help me get out of bed. And they did. And she walked to the bathroom, went to use the bathroom. And the next thing they heard, she was taking her bath. And everybody oh, were like, yeah. what the, what is going on here? What is going on Amen. here? The children... <laughs> Older children who, yeah, the older children who live with her, they were terrified that what is happening. They didn't know. <laughs> so Victoria called and told them what just happened in the church and what and what the 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 bishop said to her. They said, Which bishop. She said, the one that loved my little my little son and my little daughter, uh, the one that my husband always talk to you guys about. He said, ah, what did he do? And then she narrated to them what happened. And that was it. Like I told Vivian um, a few weeks back, God looks at solution. God doesn't look at the problem. God looks Amen. at God based. God is not problem based. If you see Anything you do in life and anybody want to use it against you, judge you, interpret you, try to construct your past, present, and future, that's not God. Try to shame you, mock you, that's not God. So that is how discernment of spirit works. That's how discernment of spirit works. It's your ability to hear what somebody is not telling you. This is not about reading cues. Yes. Yeah. The mental spirit is far more penetrative than intellectual curiosity or than experience of psychology and psychoanalysis. Yes. Far more, far more deeper than that. Because, you see, the ways of God is better than the ways of human beings. That's why it's called a gift. That's why it's called a gift. I'll give you an example. Somebody is very sick and uh, they've gone to the hospital and the person came back, and they said the person should come home to die. Just listen very carefully. The person should come home to die. And the whole family was very upset about it. That they've gone to many specialists around the country, and they could not find out what the issue was. Finally, what happened when I was called into the into into the problem? I went straight to solution. I told God, "What is the problem here? I need to know what the problem is, so that the solution will be quick." Then I was told there is a demon at the back, living at the back of the woman. At the back. Yeah, there's a demon living like oh. L.I.V. that has moved moved in with his luggage and, and children and, and husband and wife, every one of them. You know? yeah. And they are living. The back means the backside of this person's body. They've occupied it. 
And that is also the reason why this person is also bent over. This person is mm-hmm. bent. Like Notre Dame. Told, I was told to go and stand at the back of the person and pull, and pull this black cat, white cat, gray cat, okay. different colors to pull them out. I mean, these things, they look, they look like fairy tales. They look strange. It doesn't yeah. fit into reality of humanity. It doesn't fit yeah. into the, 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 it's just strange. So, I, yeah, I went and stood before the, 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 the back. I, I went and stood behind the person's back. And I asked those who were with me to stand around. And they stood around and just watched. And I began, because I was told it is in the form of a cat. It's not that the demon is a cat, but in the form. So I pulled the thing out and pulled them out and went to the window and dropped them. And went to the window. At the, when I did the last one, I was told, this is the last demon that you just pulled out. At that point, the gatekeeper demon now spoke through this woman for the first time. For the first time. They heard a strange, deep voice speak to her and said, are you going to also get rid of me? I said, oh, yeah. Amen. <laughs> Do you know how scary it is? Do you know how scary it is? Oh, uh, yeah. Some you hear the voice of a woman in a man, and sometimes you hear the voice of a man in a woman, and sometimes you hear the voice of ancient people in a human being. How do you deal with that kind of a thing? Immediately the demon left, the sickness left. So now we know that a lot of sickness and ill health and disability and and um, and and, uh, uh, and uh, mental issues, uh, 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 poverty issues, a lot of these things, a lot of crisis in the world is not natural. Many of them come from the world of devils, the world of demons, and the world of fallen civilization long gone, but they are still active yes. in plan- out there and in our planet. Yes. And we have to deal with these things. So you see, discernment of spirit tells you, not that it tells you probably, maybe, discernment of spirit goes straight to the heart of the matter and tell you exactly what the issue is, and many a time will also tell you exactly what the solution is. Exactly. Yeah. There was a lady that breeds dogs in our in our international conference in Atlanta. We held it in one of the hotels in Atlanta. And it was crazy, my dear. People saw a bat, a black bat, came out of the ear of a lady. And it wasn't funny. It was not funny. Because she was deaf. And I was told to put my finger inside her ear. And I did. And when I removed that, a bat came out. And she started to hear. And that, and with, and with that deafness, deaf, deafness, have been, de- uh, um, uh, yes. she was also having a migraine headache, e- 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 problem, so much problem. Immediately that thing left, the, the solution was on. The solution was on. I've seen people whom immediately they were delivered from whatever. Either a human being living in them was cut out of them, was removed. A human monitoring spirit was removed. Poverty stopped. Now they can keep money. There are people when once they get money, they start to spend it, and you don't even know why. Problems just keep coming. Family, all that kind of thing. Immediately, a particular thing is removed from you, to begin to build wealth, to begin to build money. Others are being led astray, invest in the wrong people, move with the wrong crowd, move with the wrong relationship, 
all that kind of a thing. Immediately something is out of their their presence or their inside or their mind or their brain or wherever the thing is, boom, the problem stops. Forever. This is forever. So the gift of discernment of spirit is so important because if you don't know something, what you don't know is greater than you. What you don't know will kill you. What you don't know will take advantage of you. What you don't know will put you in debt. What you don't know will delay you, cripple you. It will disturb you. What you don't know will cause you trauma. Yes. People will come with bags of gold to marry you or to do business with you. And you, you go along with it because you don't know. But mm -hmm. if you, the God kind of knowing, the God kind of insight that is precise to the point, boom, uh, you will tell the person, I would like to refer you to so so and so. And the person says, why don't you do it? And he says, no, 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 no. Uh, I'm already, I have enough client. But you see, the money they are bringing is good. But you, 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 you know already that this money is rotten money. They just want that into your life. That's what it is. One of, uh, one of, uh, one of those that guides me in, in mission talks to me about how a woman and her son began to come to his, his, uh, his church in Texas. They began out of nowhere, and this woman, the family owned oil business. They, they own oil wells also in Texas. It's real. They do. She looked them up. She went to the, he looked them up. He went to the office. He saw them. It's true. They own all this. It's not that she's an investor. They own it. So he was very happy that he has such a, a person in his church. Because money will now start to flow. Little did he know that it was a trap. If he had the gift, he would have known. He would not have paid them any attention. I know people who will send in a $1,000 gift or $2,000 gift to me. But what they are looking for is, is to gain entrance into my life or into what I'm doing for, for certain things that they want, certain favors that they want. Sometimes the favor is not a bad one. Sometimes it's a very corrupt one. So you have to know what you're dealing with. So the woman will come to, and the, and the son will come to every Bible studies. They will come to every Sunday service. And they kept coming. And then the woman gave a big sum of money to the, to the, to the, to the, to the church and to him. And he was very happy that God has given him the gift of a human being. Because one of the gifts that we have to pray for is the gift of people, the gift of the right people, the gift of the right person. You need to pray for that gift. It's a gift that you need to receive and be very appreciative. So uh, after a while, the woman asked him, asked this pastor, that he will want him to invest a certain amount of money. And this certain amount of money is far more bigger than what the lady has donated to that church. Far more bigger. He said, because, I mean, you can have all this money in your church. You should be able to invest in, in, in our oil business. So, they, so ah, the man didn't hesitate. He quickly, he said, okay, this woman, look at what you have given. She come to Bible study every week come to the prayer meeting every week, come to their camp meetings all the time. All I mean, this woman is on fire for God. Little did he know that that was a trap. You know that he went to the board of his church and they took out this huge amount of money and invested in their business, in the business of this lady, in the oil business of this person in Texas. Do you know that immediately that check was, was cashed? Immediately it was cashed. 
on Monday, on Tuesday, that woman and his son did not show up up till today. They never showed up. They didn't show up anymore for anything in that church. He tried to find out whether something was wrong. Not He called her up. They say everything is fine. She's at work. They can't even get that pastor through to this woman whom, ah, immediately he's called, he, he called her the big, his woman took the, the lady deleted, deleted him, deleted his church from her personal phone, then their business, their business line, email, everything. Can you believe that? He couldn't get through. And what happened? They lost that money. Yeah. Even though it was legitimately, legally invested, paperwork signed, all of that. He lost, he and his congregation lost that money. Another man here in California, some, some group of pastors, well-known pastors in Africa, asked him to organize his church for them to contribute money for them to buy cars and they and they bought cars and shipped them from and shipped them to Africa. And those pastors who sell the car they will share the profit. And he himself, when once the car arrives he will go there to go and get seventy percent and all these pastors will share thirty percent. So he thought. Then he went out there. They told him the car has arrived, so he went. By the time he reached, the day before he arrived, those pastors sold each and every one of those choice cars they sold them. So the buyers were ready. The buyers bought them. By the time that guy arrived and went knocking at the church premises of those pastors, none of them were seen. They've all left. Some took Cameroon. Some abroad, some to Togo, some to South Africa, some to Ethiopia. They've all vanished. They left their churches to somebody else to run. Do you know that that man became a lunatic? That man became a mental case. He could not come back to America for several years because they lost that money. There are certain things, like I said last Sunday, People have already planned things ahead of time against you. And you don't know. People do study you very well and then plan and then execute it. So so somebody just calling you is not it's not the first time that they just found you and then call you or they just saw you and wanna do business. No, no, no. They've studied you. They've studied you and have, and have so many scenarios of how to take advantage of you and what they want to do with you. So the gift of the sentiment of spirit is very, very important in stopping trauma, carelessness. Not, I mean, your brain is good that you, because of the fall of human beings, in the history of our civilization, human beings going to listen to Satan and all of that, going to listen and do business with somebody that did not create them. It has, it has limited our intelligence. It has limited our ability to 100% function as spirit. So that most of what we do, 99.5% of what we do in today's world is based on the mind realm. We've not yet even broken into the spirit realm. That's what you have to be aware of. Yeah. So that is why God decided that through the Holy Spirit, certain gift has to be in operation so that you can still make up for what was lacking from the days of the fall of Adam and Eve. So that you can still operate fully and enjoy life on the earth without being fooled, without being led astray, without being destroyed. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. 
And one of those knowledge is discernment of spirit and of knowledge. Yeah. So this is quite different from word of knowledge, word of wisdom, and you will see where also discernment of spirit is tied to this other gift where you see this operating and you see other gift operating as well. It's just like when you see one demon in operation, you will see other supportive demon or fallen angels in association. They always work together. So many a times when you see one gift in operation, you'll see other gift in operation at the same time. God doesn't want you to lose money. God doesn't want you to enter into relationship that you will be a, 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 what do we call it, a swinging door in and out, back and forth, in and back and forth. And also God does not want you to live in ignorance of what the problem is. God wants you to know what the problem is and what the solution is at work. And deal with it quickly. God wants God want us to deal with issues quickly and move on. We are not to get stuck. Remember what God said after the fall, after the, the, the flood of Noah. He said, my spirit will not continue to be at war, will not continue to, 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 um, to fight with human beings. It's not fair. Because since the days of his youth, human beings will always want to do things that are silly. Things that are dirty, things that are evil that they think will give them advantage. I will not constantly combat with humans. If God Himself, how much more you? You don't want to spend all your life criticizing, judging human beings. One thing that God has done for me that I am appreciating right now and I'm having a lot of fun being alive is this. Everyone I meet, Everywhere I go, everything I do, the Almighty don't want me to see the problem. He wants me to see the problem. How do I learn from this person? What do this person know? I don't know. Yes. If I enter into a new hotel, God is telling me, can you look at how? Take, take, make a little movie of this. Show it to Mary. But once you settle down, show it to Mary, show it to Vivian, show it to Vicky. Let them look at it and see if you guys are going to build or going to buy, these are the minor changes you may make. This is the reason they, they build this like this in order to take advantage, financial advantage, in order to use a tiny space and put this there and put that there. Forget about the convenience. Look at how you can profit from the way the structure things. That's just the way it is. And with that, that has saved me from criticizing, judging people in any group of people or even one person I meet, family that I meet. My job is to learn something from them. Forget about how dirty things are, how they have not done this, how they have not done that how they live in such and so. Look at what is it? How can I take advantage of this environment and make money or bring people in into what I'm doing? That's what I look at these days. And that shows that I've grown. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I can see Vivian shouting, hallelujah. Ma Mary shouting, oh, glory be to God. I can see that. I can see Rosalind saying, that's my boy. That's it. That's how it's supposed to be. Emily will say, oh, yeah, that's my boy. Yeah, yeah. I was waiting for him to reach this, this particular kind of class and status. I'm so happy. That's what Emily will say. <sighs> because in everything, look at the life of Haga. Haggai is complaining to God about talking to the angel about her. Uh, uh, she doesn't have water to drink for her and, her, and, her. and God, God is telling her about the future of the child, about her own life, how things will be well. 
<laughs> we are busy complaining about this. God is busy trying to show us the solution. <laughs> you know, where the water is and all of that. Can you imagine that? Mm-hmm. Wow. That's just the way it is. God is, the sentiment of spirit is you go straight to how things, why, what, how. God will tell you, I'm going to solve this problem. Bam. Sometimes he'll tell you how. Or that time he just that I'll solve it. And that's the end of it. Move on. And that's it. Don't think about it. That's what faith is. Faith is God telling you what he is going to do about you. Faith is God telling you how things will turn out. Other people don't know how things will turn out. What do you know? See, that discernment of spirit is the same language for what faith is. Discernment of spirit, God tells exactly how things are going to happen. The solution, sometimes he tells you the time, the date, where. And when you look at it, that's, that's the faith thing there. Moses never had faith. A lot of the people, we associate them with faith. Never had no faith. Instead, the kind of faith they had was God telling them what he was going to do. So it was not even faith. It was simply they followed God. They listened to God's word. God was able to descend for them, and they just followed it, and that was it. So that this is not a big thing. It is ordinary. Is common yet um, ordinary yet uh, extraordinary yet ordinary. If we are willing, if we are willing to tell God, this are the kind of lifestyle that I want. Because I hate suffering. I was born to enjoy. I was born to prosper, and not to suffer. And you mean from the bottom of your heart. If the heart has the bottom, I don't know where the bottom is or where the head or the tail is. Yeah. You mean it. Then you will start experiencing it. And in fact, many people think that it's only when they go to prayer or fast that God comes to share things, give them insight into things, give them deep knowledge into things, reveal things to them. The sentiment of spirit is like a summary, the nitty-gritty of the revelation life. The revelation life, the life of revelations, the life of revealing mysteries, so as to remove complexes and complications. You need to write that down for yourself. It is, it is, it is God coming to remove complications and making life simple. The gift of discernment of spirit is given to you so that life is made simple for you, not complex, not complicated. Other human beings are waiting to make life complicated for you. Devils are there to make life complicated for you. You yourself, because you don't have all the knowledge in the world, it doesn't matter how educated you are, how experienced you are, you cannot have the final authority on on a lot of things. And especially when it comes to doing business on the earth. That's why the sentiment of spirit is given to make life easy and simple. Please don't forget that. Let me make sure that you guys get it. Why is the gift of the sentiment of spirit given? It is to do what? Everybody say it. Let's say it together. Make life simple. 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 simple for you. Yes. To make life simple for you. To make Easy life simple. For you. Easy and simple for you. Not complicated. Easy and simple. You will learn this week how this gift, the gift of discernment of spirit, how you find a little bit of it 
in some other gift. In some other gift. You see, in the word of knowledge and the word of wisdom, you need this in order to you 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 need you that is something is revealed. Uh, uh, the, the 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 gift of the word of knowledge and word of wisdom. I call it the gift of uh, knowing and the gift of application. Make sure, Ma, Ma Mary, you write it down, Samantha. The gift of word of knowledge and wisdom, I call it the gift of knowing and the gift of right application, right, R-I-G-H-T, right application. How you apply what you know. Like God reveals something about somebody, how do you approach that person to tell that person about it? You see, there are people who know something and they just rush to go and reveal something and then destroy people and kill people by what they reveal because they don't have the gift of wisdom, which is the right application of knowing. So discernment of spirit gives you, summarizes most of this gift for you. It just summarizes it for you so that you don't you don't go and you don't do this, then you wait for this gift to, to start, then you wait for, you turn on this button. It's the one button that when you push, everything is manifested at once. Please make sure you write it down like that. The sentiment of spirit is the one button that you push and everything else, and everything is manifested for you all at one time. For example, somebody who speaks in tongue, in, 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 in tongue, which is languages, speaking languages, whether language that is widely spoken on the earth or was on the earth or the language that is outside our planet. When a person speaks, you need, you need somebody else to interpret or you yourself will interpret. But in the sentiment of spirit, you just go straight to the matter. You know it. You know you you the 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 way to solve the problem is given to you or the problem is solved for you. Mm -hmm. Other thing you have to be aware of is because of the wickedness of human beings and how a human being will want to be all and all for you. You need the gift of discernment of spirit. So, but nobody will mock you, make a slave of you, because. Somebody might not like you, but they will pretend for a very long time yep. that they really like you. They and their family, they like you, that they really need you. And it's a lie. They came for something. Always, always, when what people come for, when they cannot find it, you will see their reaction towards you will be different. The discernment of spirit will release to you the ability to know whether somebody is keeping you because of money, because they have made a mistake and they need you to solve a problem for them. So you will know why somebody wanna marry you. You will know why somebody wants you in their family. You will know why somebody wants you in their business. You will know. So that is, the discernment of spirit is the one-stop shop for knowing and for right application. The reason why discernment of spirit is given is so that you can stay happy all the time. You can stay happy all the time. Another thing is that God doesn't want anyone to waste your time or you to waste your own time by going to work, to have a job, the wrong job, with the wrong, in the wrong company. God doesn't want you to go and wait 20, 30 years working in the wrong company and you don't make no money. So that's why you have to ask for this gift so that you don't waste your time or allow people to waste your time and take advantage of you and keep paying you a, a pita and a Paul, uh, a peanut and a pen, <laughs> you know, kind of salary or paycheck and you and um, I mean you are paying your bills and you are saving 20 bucks every month what are you going to do with that kind of money yes. Not much, not 
What are you going to do with that kind of money? You'll be able to know which child came for you, which child came out of you for you, and which child is to move on. And you love them all equally, but you will not reveal the truth of what you know about them. Many a time with discernment of spirit, you will know above and beyond about people that you are dealing with. You will know. Why do they behave the way they behave? What kind of a spirit being are they? What kind? Why are they in your life? What can you extract from them? Before they extract everything, they came to extract from you and dump you and move on to somebody else. You need to be aware of this. And many a time, people can hide things for a long time. People can hide things. They will really hide things. And you'll never know. So that's the one button. When once it is pushed for you, you will know. And then you will know how to be in somebody's life without being in somebody's life. What we call the gift of attachment and detachment at the same time. It will be like uh, having the mindset of, of a whore. The mindset of a prostitute. <laughs> uh -huh. Samantha and I, we had that, we had that, uh, we had that talk last week. <laughs> How? And then also, not just a prostitute, but also business class have that mindset. Also, yeah. women have that mind, especially women have that, they have that kind of uh, gift. Uh, also, yeah. there are men who have it. Also, is very rampant with people in the spirit realm, especially which doctors, they have that. You know, and Samantha and I, we were, we were discussing how um, uh, sometimes male or female prostitutes um, or gamblers, people who gamble, I mean, who go to casino to gamble, who never gamble, who never. I need, I need my own casino <laughs> for people to come and put money. <laughs> That's my offering box. <laughs> So, um, Samantha and I, we were discussing last week how a, a woman, uh, a woman can also men do do that, but mostly women have that gift more than more than men. How they can be there, but they are shut out. A woman can live with a man or with another woman, but they are not there. Their mind is shut down. Yeah. Also. Also, even in sexual, even even in sexual relationship, you know, in a marriage or outside marriage, uh, you you see you see how somebody can be there, in whatever they are doing, uh, behind open or closed doors. You see that the 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 person is there. You think they are participating in life with you, but they are completely detached from you. And I was asking Samantha, how do people do that? And Samantha was teaching me how, <laughs> how, uh, especially women do that, because I, I didn't really know much about this area. So I consulted with her because I was told she's, she's good in knowing this kind of thing. So I talked to her about it. And she, and she gave me a wide variety of scenarios of how this happens that a, a woman might not like her husband or her man, and you will think that she's involved in that relationship or marriage, and she's not. I was totally in shock. And there are men who, who do the same thing too. Yes. So discernment of spirit will let you know when somebody's playing with your mind, yeah, it will tell you when somebody is with you, but they are not with you. And a lot of people just want you to play along, whether they know you know or not. They, they just want you to play along, like everything is all right. So you're just like, yeah, it's all right. Everything is fine. So that's the segment of spirit for you. Make life easy. Puts you on the journey of happiness and peace.
and progress and prosperity. You know, that's what it's about. So you see, God is always ahead of us in planning for us. This is because he knows that he doesn't want anybody to take advantage of us because it will hurt us. And many of us will not be able to recover from getting hurt or getting abandoned or getting rejected or we trust people, we become loyal to people. I don't want you to be loyal to people who will never be loyal to you. Mm -hmm. I don't want you to. Why should you? Why should you give money to people who when you need money, they will never give to you? Why should you? Yeah. I know people who come to a mission and they, and they donate a hundred bucks. Next time they are called, they are looking for a thousand bucks. <laughs> and that, that, that's cheating. That's really pure and applied manipulation. Yep. And I really, really think that is wrong. But many a time you have to pretend and behave like you don't know what you are doing. Mm. That's what it is. That everything is all right. Because that's how adults behave. You know, you pretend like you don't. But that's how God behaves ultimately. He knows he pretends like he doesn't. We call that the drama of God. He knows mm -hmm. everything. He doesn't know nothing. And so he allows you to do the talking. As though he doesn't know anything about it. You do the talking. But he knows that you don't mean none of it. Hmm. So I'm I'm very, very happy that we have the kind of spirit that has been willing to that is willing to share his gifts with us so that we do not perish in the in the land. Mm -hmm. The will make you when you go to a place to find out what you should do there. How you fit in. How you fit in, in it. What to take advantage of in that place. That's what the spirit, the gift of discernment of spirit. It is about the spirit. So, so the last one week we've been talking about a spiritual gifting in terms of business, in terms of people. This week, Wednesday, we will start talking, or Sunday, we will start talking, and we will start talking, this coming Sunday, we will start um, discussing the discernment of cities, discernment of families, discernment of villages, tribe, discernment of um, nations, and continents. And this is going to be a massive one for next Sunday. Just get prepared for it. There are certain places that you will never do well. And there are certain places that you will do very well. But remember that the segment of spirit we've been talking about the last one week. Remember that there are people that you will never do well if you hang around them. Yeah. Possible for you to do well if you hang around certain certain person. Um, what God told me many years ago has come to pass. There was a particular time that a lot of people above my age grade, uh, age group, within my age group, below my age group, everybody were marrying, going to college, all of that. And the spirit of the living God told me, you see all these people, give it 10 years. Give it 20 years. Give it 15 years. 99% of all these people, they will be out of marriages. They will not be in their businesses. They will not be in their jobs. The job that they are wearing suit and tie and going to today will come to an end. I say, really? Today, everything the Holy Spirit told me is the truth. 99% of all those people are out of their marriages. Marriage, lavished marriages. Marriages that were lavished. Money lavished as they nothing. It's all gone. It's all gone. 100%. Swept away by the tide of life. 
because majority of the people who went into all those businesses, all those marriages, rushed into it. Nobody took time to ask for the gift of discernment of spirit so that they know exactly how the outcome will look like. You see, the gift of discernment of spirit will give you an outcome long before it can, or long before it comes. That's what it is. Eternal Father, I ask you to bestow this this super gift on us. Bestow it on us. So that nobody will take advantage of us. Amen. So that life life doesn't take advantage of us. Wicked people do not take advantage Amen. of us. And wicked spirits. Amen. That we have to be given in abundance. In pure abundance. Amen. So we can be like you on the earth. Amen. And Amen. represent People, we ask for this gift so that we can properly represent God and represent ourselves. Yeah. In the name of God the Father and God the Son, the Holy Spirit, now and forth. Amen. 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 Now, the gift that you have just asked for and I have asked on your behalf has been given. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Bishop. Yeah. Yep. And Thank you, you Bishop. Yes, 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 that is going to happen. It is not just when you do. It is not just when you pray and fast. It will be working with you when you don't even expect it. Whenever something will happen, that will bring your prosperity to kick in. Whenever something will happen that will want to create problem for you, it will kick in and tell you, don't do it. So just watch out. You will start seeing this Amen. gift. Remember when, remember the story I told you guys many years ago of when they brought a mad girl, pure mad girl, into our chapel when I was in the seminary. And everybody was singing the church hymn, and then uh, reading the prayers from the prayer book of the church. Remember, I was trained in Anglican, that is Episcopal, Methodist, and Presbyterian Seminary, because this church are the same. They are a united church. And while they were doing that, I, the Holy Spirit told me to go and talk to the president of the college. So I walked up there, took the microphone from him. I asked him to go and sit down. Can you imagine a boy telling a president of the college to go and sit on his butt? <laughs> uh huh. And I told all the professors on their butt to go and sit down, close the hymn book, and close the prayer book. The Holy Ghost is my witness. My class, my colleagues, and those who were above me and those who were below, they saw it and they were shocked. I told them, go and sit on you. We don't need your hymns. We don't need, God doesn't need your hymn and doesn't need your prayers right now. I said, this is not a prayer thing. It's not a prayer meeting. It's a power thing. And thou says the Lord. And that's it. And I told him exactly what God said and what God is going to do. And this was not something that took a week. Two, three days, game over. The girl was back to normalcy. And on Sunday, they brought they brought a live cow. They brought different things and money. I never said none of that. They brought it to the college. Yep. So you see, for example, if 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 I'm to do something for you, I don't pray. That's how God managed. That's when I knew that I am in the realm of the seers. S e e r s of those who see into things. Mm -hmm. Of those who hear into things that I'm, I, I wasn't called and chosen to be a pastor. Being a pastor has been a problem. That's not my calling. A lot of people do not know. That's not, I don't even have a calling. I was chosen. 
the people say they have a calling. I say, well, you say that whoever called you will kill you, you know, because you're so poor. You're poor and wretched, so I don't know who called you. <laughs> I don't know who's calling you or who called you. My father doesn't call Yes, yeah. oh, mine, mine, I wasn't called. I didn't hear. I didn't hear. I wasn't called. Mine, I was chosen. Amen. I'm separated. I'm separated. So it was when God started to talk to me. I, I got, I got, I have to tell you, family, I have to tell you the truth. I got angry. I got really angry. After some years of being in the, in the, in the, in the, in the mission as a priest, I began to really get angry because I was like, what area of specialization am I? Because I did not fit into this. You see, if you are going to be a pastor, you must be a seasoned politician. If you are going to be a you must be a seasoned politician, you must be a seasoned thief, you must be a seasoned manipulator. You must. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. I don't want that. <laughs> yeah, but that's that is what it is to be in that game. I don't want that. <laughs> but, that is, but that is what it is. If, if every pastor must be a politician, whether you like it or not. You must be a politician, you must be a thief, you must be a big time massive manipulator. You must. If you are, if you are not how are you going to be able to be to 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 govern people, lead people, all that kind of thing? No. And you have to have the gift. You have to have the gift of punishment, whereby, whereby you know, being, being a pastor will pay. People will punish you. You you can't you you hold back. What I mean by punishment also is that you hold back a lot of things that you should have said to somebody to correct somebody. You cannot correct them. Why? Because they pay you a salary. Yeah, they pay your salary. Nope. So you cannot tell them anything. They're in charge of you. What? So, so they, yeah, they're in charge of you. And of course, you must be a seasoned witch, one way or the other, <laughs> that you want to interpret what witchcraft is about. You have to be. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Jesus. 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 Oh my God. <laughs> Oh, yeah, God. Yeah. I don't want to be a pastor. No, listen. And there is a lot you cannot preach from the, from the Bible. You can't preach. Why, why are you going to preach against Satan? Whereas the people that give you the most money in your congregation, that when they pay a million dollar tithe for a whole year, they are practitioners of sorcery and divination. And it is through those means that they have gained entrance to the world. Oh and they make you think of it. Bill, a real pastor will tell you. So are you going to go and preach against those things? Are you crazy? They will remove you. They will go to your bishop and tell the bishop, or if you are the bishop, they will go to wherever the hierarchy is. They will supply money to the top, and they will remove you from that place. I'm serious. So there is a... You, you you are like a witch. You, that, that is, you can't say. There are things you cannot say. There are things you cannot do. Mm -mm. So you become a, a politician, a thief, a manipulator, a coward, you know? A coward, a rock. You put up with a lot of what what people in the in what a lot of politicians and, and people in the business class they say. You put up with a lot of bullshit, you know? That that's what I'm supposed to put in there. You put up with it. <laughs> oh my word. This person come to you, this person come to you and tell you, Oh, this is what is going on. You tell them, Oh, that's fine. That's really fine. But you know it's not fine. Because you don't want to offend nobody. So you tell them everything is good. And then that person leaves. His enemy, who is also in the same congregation or in the same house, they come to you, and their and their wife and children, they come to you and they complain about the other group. So you become a coward, you become a manipulator, because you don't want to offend nobody. You don't want to tell them they did wrong. This is this, this is that. You don't you don't want to go there. So that's why they have, the work of a pastor 
You see, it happens for you to shape your congregation to the point where they can accept correction, they can accept their wrongdoing. You say it has. By the time you reach that point, you've already grown gray hair. You and you are 80. You are already there in the grave. You are already going to the grave. You already see the cup of waiting for you. So, why do I want? And God spared me this since I was a young boy and went to the priesthood. And, you know, they are then you a priest. They don't tell you what area of priesthood you are chosen to be because they, the people who are then you, they themselves don't know. And somebody like me, whom I started being a priest by curing mad people, by working major, major miracles. Did not know that I wasn't chosen to be a pastor. I was chosen to be uh, a seer. I was chosen straight into that. Those who manifest, those who create something, those who bring things into the world and remove things out of the world, those who bring things into your destiny, remove things out of your destiny, create a dream for you, create money for you, you know, that's the area I am. You know, do the area of of the powerful healers. That's the area. You know, those who make things happen. And I spent all my life trying to be a pastor. And the more I try, the worse it was for me. The worse it is. Yeah. Do you think, see, how many pastors do you think will go to go and say what God says? Like they had an election in Nigeria. Every Pentecostal pastor, the big one, the one with the big churches, most of the traditional uh, major pastors are prophesying about the uh, P2B will win the election. God says the Lord, everybody. And Uzo came to me and said, have you heard what these people are saying? I said, Uzo, don't follow these people. Follow me. Follow me. Uzo, follow me. Don't follow them. I mean, there is no pastor in Nigeria that will not go that route. No, just like when, when Trump business came, the last election in, in America, everybody was praying, something, prophesying. Oh my God, it was crazy. God has spoken, God has chosen him. And I told people, don't go that route. Follow me. This is, because I'm not a pastor, I am a seer. That's the, that's the world I belong to. So I told people, don't follow what this noise is about Trump. It's going to fail. This is what he's going to do to try to win the election. And this is how it's going to go. Because God has left him. And God has left the evangelicals, the Pentecostal and the traditional church. God left them because they are not willing to listen. They are not willing to do the right thing. When people have made up their mind not to do the right thing, God will abandon them to their own devices. Whatever happened to them, they are the ones that cause it. Nobody should be held responsible. Not even the devil. Because the devil himself will not say, will not agree that he led them that way. He said, that's what they wanted. I only came to, to help them because I saw they wanted help in that area. So don't blame me. They wanted it first. <laughs> so the last election in Nigeria, I released just a video. Vicky is my witness. When I put that video, people were even cursing out my mother. People were even cursing my mother out. That how can I live in overseas and know what is happening in Nigeria? How can I? Who, who, how dare you? How dare you? How Vicky, you will see the comment people commented on me, including big time Pentecostal pastors. pastors. Who are you? How can you live overseas with this your big mouth and big ears? You know, and you are telling and you are telling <laughs> even pastors in South Africa, even pastors in Ghana, in Kenya, in, in overseas are in support of us and saying that this is what is going to happen. Everybody has agreed on this thing. God has agreed. I told them it's not as simple as that. And I released a video, Tinibu, Keep Covenant, and that's all. That's the title of the video, and I put it in there. Everybody were mad at me. And when I began to tell them that their country is a business and that it's not one group that is leading the country, it's a cabal of people. 
I start to give them insight into what is happening in their own country. I don't live there. I don't belong there. I'm not from there anymore. <laughs> they were mad at me. At the end of the day, who was the president? The guy that I told them is going to be the president, whether they like it or not. Why? Because I have Uzo, Uzo was shocked. Uzo was shocked for the for the first time. That's how Uzo went and, and said, no matter what happened to him, he's going to stick it out with me because he has seen too much already with me. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And now, where are all those people who were insulting me, disrespecting me, criticizing me, cussing out my mother? Who were they? Where are they? All those Pentecostal pastors have entered into their share like battles. They've all gone inside their dark and remain quiet. They don't yep. know. They don't know what happened to them. They have no idea. They don't know. Shame on them. Yep. Many a time, many a time, being a pastor is one of the hardest job on the earth. You will grow old before your time. In fact, you will die before your time. <laughs> that job, you, that job, that job will kill you before death kill you. Before death kill you, that job will kill you. And that is why I want, I want to produce a different kind of priest for our group. People will yes. give this kind of gift so that you just stay in your area of specialization and not try to do a general work and become a witch, a juju, a, 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 a Jesus, a Jesus voodoo person, you know? <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> I've never heard that before. <laughs> <laughs> and that is why I want to make sure that each of you have money. Each of you is a bad thing to come into politics, business, or come into a priest, the priesthood, including the traditional priesthood of juju and voodoo. You shouldn't go into those kind of things if you don't have money, because people are going to people are going to make a mess of who you are. They are going to use money to stop you. They are going to use money. I'm serious. Really sure. mm -hmm. Manipulate you here. Yeah. They are going to use money and influence to manipulate you. So I believe that those who go into certain, those who go into certain profession on earth should already have the backing of money, the backing of good people with money backing you, so that you can do the right thing. If not, you, you are just gonna be a coward. Yes. And the worst thing is when when certain families are in charge of your congregation. You you are just you just do what they want you to do and that is just the way it is. That's just the way it is. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm. So I will see all of you on I will see all of you on Sunday. Vicky and Vivian will see yeah will see you all on Wednesdays and Fridays. We are going to have a blast this week. I thank you so much. Please, if you do not have a good job. Please let me know. Let me create a better job for you. It's about time. I think we've entered into that time that we need. We've, we've entered into next year. We've entered into 2024 already. That's what I was told when I came into this service. I want to start preparing each of you for 2024 now. I want to month of August, start preparing each of you for... Um, I'll start preparing each of you for 2024. We we are entering that or we've entered already. So we, we need to do it right now. And then the money you need for 2024, we need to create it right now. We need to get everything on paper and, and going. So tomorrow at 8 o'clock, um, mm -hmm. it will be opened. If you call me, you don't you don't hear from me. Know that I am I am inside the... I am flying. Just know that I am at, the, at, at an airport in America or traveling. But sometime during the evening, I'll be back. Yeah. 
So if you don't hear from me okay. on on Monday, leave me an email or leave me a message. Make sure that I know how much money you want to make for 2024. What are the things you want? I've already told Mary the three things that they told me that she's going to need. Vivian, I know a few things that you're going to need. Vicky, I know a few things. Rosalind, I know a few things. So just give me like three things. Don't give me a big list. Give me the three things that you need for 2024, how much money you need, and two more things that is central to you. Do you have those two things? Everything will run around it. So please make sure you send that, email it to me, or send that by mail if you want to attach if you want to attach a, a, a financial uh, support to it, that would be fine. So begin to do it either today or tomorrow. Begin to send it so that I begin to compile it. Because when once we start meeting this week, we start right away to start praying for the ones that come in. We start praying for, we start praying and taking out. We start taking people and cross into 2024 right away. I don't wait till till the meeting of January 1st to cross people into next year. We 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 are far advanced. We do it like God does it. We do it far ahead of everybody, so that you start enjoying uh, the fruit of of next year right now. You enter into it. What happens if within the month of August, September, you have all the money you need in 2024? What happened to it? The rest of what you will have in 2020, the remaining months of of 2023, and Till we reach this point again in 2024, I mean it's just jara, it's just an additional money for you. So let's 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 do it the way that it is done in heaven. Even devils, even devils are advanced; they are ahead in a lot of things. It's only humans who who want to delay things. I do not want to delay things anymore. I'll pass that stage in my life. Whereby I wait till it's about time, then I rush into it like everybody else. Mm -mm, don't do it. Devils don't do it like that, which doctors don't. They don't. Fallen angels don't do it like that. They they have the time fit for things ahead of time. I see you guys. Vivian and uh, Victoria will see you guys on Wednesday and Friday for us to have a tough discussion on what we've discussed, what you've heard this morning. And uh, Sunday, we will start with continental, national, um, geographic, family, um, state, regional, province, uh, discernment of spirit. I'll see you then. This is Idika Imeri on this broadcast. Thank you so much. Glory be to the Holy Spirit and glory be to God the Father and glory and honor be to our Lord Jesus Christ, both now and forever. Amen. 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 And amen. Amen. Go out there. Amen. Go amen. Out there. amen. And amen. Amen. Remember that you were born to enjoy and remember that you were born to prosper, not to suffer. I want everybody to repeat it. I was born to enjoy. Everybody shout it. I was I born was to born enjoy. To enjoy. I was born to enjoy. And not to suffer. I was born to enjoy and not to suffer. And not to suffer. Everybody. I was born to enjoy. And not to suffer. And not to suffer. Amen. Bye bye. Amen. The email is irikaimeri2000 at gmail.com. Send your send you how much you want for 2024 to that email. Mary 2000 at gmail.com. And most reverend's anniversary is on the...